Nobody's great when they're not tired. This is when they're tired, that's when the real champions come out. That's when a real dog come out. It's where I think the real truth comes out, because I think there are a lot of people who are very talented who can make it there. There are very few people who can deal with the pressure and the stress that happens when we're there. I feel I'm the best ever. It's not bragging or boasting. The proof is in the pudding. In my mind, I'm always the best. I am the greatest fighter of all time. And when I hit you with a hard right hand, you will fall. You gotta win tomorrow, you gotta win right now. If you're passionate about what you're doing, keep going, keep believing, reach for the stars. Everything is always impossible until someone does it. Maybe it has never been done before. That's perfectly fine with me. But I'm gonna do it. Never say never. Because limits, like fears, are often just an illusion. Hungry dogs run fast! And let the big dogs eat! If you look at the greats in any walk of life, the greats do things when they don't always want to. And that's the separation. It means you have to be more disciplined than not disciplined. I wanted to be the best I could be, period. I was waiting for you to smile at some of the compliments. You didn't. <laughs> Smiling doesn't win you gold medals. I'm too fast, I'm too skillful, and I'm gonna show everybody out there watching this show and the whole world, and the world will bow and admit that I am the greatest of all time when you see what I do to George Foreman. I believe that whatever I put my mind to, and if I was willing to make sacrifices, and I was dedicated, that I could achieve absolutely anything. I'm the best ever. I'm the most brutal and most vicious and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. I'd like to take this chance to apologize to absolutely nobody. Maybe if someone uh, don't like me because I'm, maybe I'm too good. You win some, you lose some. But you live, you live to fight another day. And I've always believed like I'm the Michael Jordan of this industry. When I'm on the air, I'm the one that will make you want to hear from me. I don't care who I'm on the air with, I don't care who it is. It does not matter to me. By the time I finish speaking, I am the one that you're going to want to listen to. That's my attitude. If this requires 100% and you give me 99, I might want to fire you. Because I'm not, I'm about getting the job done. Sure. It's about the results. And I think that, you know, unfortunately, when we look at our generation today, not enough people preach about that because I think that we live in a society where people have become masters at pointing the finger at other people as to reasons why things don't get done. I think there's too much explanation that goes on. But the bottom line is you ain't getting it done. And if you're not getting it done, I need somebody that can get it done. I am of the belief that if you truly, truly adopt that belief in your soul, mm -hmm. Then you walk to work every day not looking for excuses. You're looking for a way for the job to get done. And in most instances, you are going to be successful than not. You want to go with status quo? You're, you're, you're perfectly you know, fine with flowing along, just safe, to get along. Safe, secure. Safe, secure, whatever. But when you're trying to win, you're constantly looking to get better. My philosophy is very, very simple when it comes to my family, particularly you know, me being a dad, if they're hungry, it's because I'm starving. I don't eat until they eat. I'm not comfortable until they're comfortable. I don't have unless they have. That's the mentality, and that's the mentality that I strictly get from my mother. And so for me, you know, having that kind of mentality, but what comes with that? What comes with that is a certain work ethic that you have to put forth, and it's a willingness to sacrifice. Am I the most disciplined person in the world? No. Am I the most meticulous person in the world like some people would believe? No, I'm meticulous enough and I'm disciplined enough. But I think the key thing is, is that the bottom line is everything to me. And whatever the bottom line requires is what I'm going to do. If the bottom line requires an excessive level of discipline, 
I'm going to do it. But to me, it's whatever the moment or the situation demands. And it's I'm a bottom lines oriented kind of person. You don't assume that opportunities are waiting for you. You know obstacles are standing in every door. Right. And so that challenge that you have to embrace and you have to deal with, that's hard to deal with when you have achieved. You don't work hard to play hard. You work hard to have the ability to play when you want to. Mm, but there's line. a difference. You handle your responsibilities first. And when you work hard and you have that sense of pride, it goes right out the window if you utilize your efforts in the wrong fashion. But when you do what's right, and it's based off of that effort that you put in, then you feel good about it because you took care of your responsibilities. Mm -hmm. Then you can go play. And I was not always confident. There's no doubt about that. I've always had my insecurities. Uh -huh. What I firmly believed in was, as it pertained to me was that I always worked hard. I was never lazy. Um, I was always somebody that believed in hard work. Betting on yourself is believing in you. Knowing who you are, what you're worth. Having an idea about it anyway. And willing to work towards that, to validate that reality. That's betting on yourself. It's your job. And if you can't do it, you scratch, claw, and even die trying. We make excuses every day, all of us as human beings. On far more occasions than not, I have to speak on the issue of accountability as it pertains to the entire sports world. And when it comes to the issue of accountability, I get all of that from mom. It happened with ESPN when my contract wasn't renewed back in 2008. I was sitting up there, I, was, I felt betrayed. I felt ticked off. My mother let me lick my wounds for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. And then she said, what could you have done better? You sure you didn't do anything? And I thought about all this. I'm like, what, what is she talking about? This is just not true. This is not right. I work hard. I do this. I do that. And then I started thinking about it. Yeah, I was a pain in the ass. I did kind of complain a little bit too much. But the biggest thing that I remember doing is that I always came to the bosses with problems. I never came to them with solutions. It was always about the problem, never the solution. And I learned when I sat back and reflected on the mistakes that I had made in my career at the mm -hmm. time, I learned that no boss wants to talk to anybody that doesn't have solutions. Instead of working around the clock trying to figure out what somebody else wants from you, good or bad, there are moments that crystallizes it for you in your mind. Pay attention and you'll see what they are. Yeah. And you'll know what to do accordingly. That is what I believe makes me the best. It's my commitment mm. to excellence for the collective whole.